Evening folks, hello again. Uh, let me just make sure this works. Um, there we go, you're live, excellent. Let's do this, let's watch the final four episodes of the first series of Games Master. Uh, the finest uh, retro video, well it wasn't retro at the time obviously, but the finest video game show ever made uh, to this date. Hope we're all enjoying it so far. Um, for those kind of new to it, uh, last time we kind of established a drinking game, which you're perfectly welcome to join if you wish. I shan't be, being teetotal, my tipple of choice is always Iron Brew. Um, but if you are of the drinking persuasion, um, basically any time Dominic Diamond, or anyone else, but mostly him, uh, drops an uh, unnecessary euphemism um, that us children back in the day completely over our head. Anytime you hear a euphemism, uh, you're more than welcome to take a drink. Um, but yeah, up to you. But that's one way of doing it. So without further ado, let's get episode 7 on the go. Let's do it. Oh, you've messed it up, Bell Waster. That's... Yeah, that's poor. Again, let me know how the sound levels are. It's different with every video file, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I didn't say alcohol. It could very well be water. There he is. The video could be higher. Forget all about the hassles of the firm EQ and get soft and moist about the things that matter in life. Freshly laundered towels, hot Ribena and video games. Soft and moist, that was your first. Licorice all sorts of a show for you tonight with news, tips, reviews and three game playing challenges. We're going to go straight into the first one now, so let's call up the man who put the M in microchip, the Games Master. How's that? Does that sound better? So you returned once more to pit your skills against one of my little challenges. I must commend your audacity. The first of this week's Jolly Jaunts is on a fishy little game called Robocod. To satisfy me, you will need to get through the very first level in less than one minute, collecting 50,000 points in the process. Better now, yeah. Amass these points by collecting bonus items from around the level and by jumping on villains. A little tip. Don't forget to use the hydraulic stretch Yeah, Robocod was a classic. Which will enable you to get past spikes unharmed when there's not sufficient room to jump. 50,000 points in one minute. Seize the moment. And I think our audience here are looking a bit restless for some serious action. So what we'll do is throw out this challenge to them. If there's anybody out there who fancies taking on the guise of James Pond Robocod, could they please thrust their arms into the air? Um, we're trying to <laughs> I thought he was... There we go. Who have we got? Oh, there's a... Oh, there's a young man peeking around there. Well, keep me... You, keep me updated on the... On the volume throughout then. Just in case got. it changes. Oh, yes, there's two girls together there. This is a classic yeah, fake yeah, picking people out the audience have already been dis uh, chosen. Yeah, guaranteed... I don't know if they'll give their surnames, but guaranteed they're children of the people working on it. Mark Wright Rock Legend, okay, and next we have Julie Marlowe. Welcome again, Master Julie, and finally Claire McNeeney. Okay, then Claire, I think we're going to have you playing first, okay? So if you'd like to trot up to our game playing seat. Now, Mark and Julie, if you'd like to go over to the organ and turn your backs to us so you don't see what's happening when Claire's playing. If you'd like <laughs> to fucking we'll Blair Witch in it. There he is, Dave Perry. To me warm and toasty in the pulpit is Games Master's resident boffin, Dave Perry. Dave, welcome. Hi, Dominic. Now, Dave, it's very tough. This fifty thousand points in sixty seconds. What's the best tip you can get? Nicely done, Elwister. That's the oh, best way to do it. Get used to the controls. Eh? He's got a telescopic body in this one, um, which you can activate through the fire button. And when you're jumping on top of the bad guys, you've got to remember to pull down on the joystick so he disappears inside his armor. Okay, let's hope our contestants bear that in mind. Claire, are you ready? Then your 60 seconds begin now. Okay, 
Yeah, he's a radio. I don't know if he still has a radio show, but he definitely had a radio show um, in Toronto. I'm pretty sure he still does now. He's been all over the place in Canada. That was shite, to be fair. I don't like this suave dick, though, so I'd rather he didn't do too well. Yeah. Okay, so of course Mark turning along, he's done that first lead success. He missed a little star that Claire found earlier. Okay, but he's, he's got, got all these things here, and he wants to use that telephone. Oh, he's fucked it as well. He's got to get across there. Fire button, fire button, Mark. It's like he's never played this game before. Okay, and now he's one across, across there. 12,100 points, 20 seconds gone, but he's like that very well. Pull down the fire. That's it, there we are. He's just down this platform now. Oh, he's made it. Oh, he's got it. Oh! <laughs> Fucked it. Neil Luck, Mark. <laughs> the abuse he's getting. He's probably 70 now. Once again, just take your time and use the telescopic body. Okay then. Julie, are you ready? Yep. Then your 60 seconds begin Did you release Robocod on Game Boy Advance for some reason? Mate. That's domination. She's fucked it as well, isn't she? A balls of it. Just out of energy. The closest anyone's got, but Julie's challenge also ends in failure. None of you's pricks got a joystick. Okay, now, five lock ball three. It's Julie. You got the closest out of all three of our competitors. Dave and I thought you were going to do it. Just a little bit of trouble near the end there with a snake, I think. Yeah, it was a bit hard for me. <laughs> okay, but did you enjoy, enjoy coming in a place? Yeah, yeah. Another round of applause then for our three contestants. Thank you very much. That doesn't count as a euphemism. She's too young. Calm yourselves. And while our contestants tread wearily away, we'll cast our eyes on this week's reviews. Our theme this week oh, the immortal. is adventure games. Had that. First off, claustrophobic caverns crawling with creepies swamped the Nintendo in The Immortal. <laughs> I didn't realise there was an NES version, I totally forgot that. Um, oh, was that a SNES? Game. It's original incarnation. It still is a good game and it has worked really quite well on the NES. It's Jesus, they had the Mega Drive one, it was it's great. Playing games. And this is certainly the best of its type on the Nintendo system. But I think they've done a very good job of it, bearing in mind the limitations of the hardware. I mean, you know, you don't expect sort of multicolour graphics, but they work well, and it's a good game. It was gory as hell, that game was brilliant. Next up on the PC, the Chuck's back, and this time he's irate as everybody's favourite pirate returns in The Secret of Monkey Island 2. The playability, it can't be beaten in my opinion. There's a lot of amusing text in there, and it's a very, very strong title indeed. It's funny. Modern day version of the Immortal would be Dark Souls, basically. 
and it's very addictive. It's brilliant. Video volume is low relative to the mic. Okay. Let me know how that is. And finally, on the master system, a caper a la Dungeons and Dragons, Heroes of the Lance. A good role-playing title, good, very sound graphically, a little lacking in the sound. I prefer something that's a bit more straightforward and did find that Heroes of the Lance was really quite a specialist game. Frankly, it's, it's a bit slow and uh, it might not have a, a mass market appeal. Oh, the show, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's nothing like Games Master since or... Yeah, there's never been. New game section. One of this year's hottest games will undoubtedly be Alien 3. Here to give us a wee peek is Joe Bonner from Pro Software. Alien 3 is a game based on what must be this year's most eagerly awaited film, Alien 3. You have to go round the complex, um, dodging aliens that come at you from out of the floor, out of the ceiling, from behind doors, all over the place, an utter infestation of aliens. Once you've managed to get past them, you actually rescue the prisoners and they bow at your knees in thanks. There are 15 levels like this, all with different graphics. Um, and different graphics. In each one for you to dispatch. Well, it's got different graphics, I'm fucking sold. And finally, this week's special mm -hmm. feature. These days, a computer game isn't worth nout unless it's accompanied by a funky soundtrack. So, here's the top five in the Games Master Hit Parade. On the mission from God at number five are the Blues Brothers with the theme from Peter Gunn. Oh, that should be number one. Monkeys Michael Jackson struts his way through Moonwalker to the sound of Smooth Criminal. Nah, before the nonsense, eh? Doing the do at number three is Betty Boo with <laughs> the theme from Magic Pockets. Number one should be Xenon 2, Mega Blast. It's straight in at number two for Cold Cut's top banana anthem, Global Chaos. Yeah, it was. Oh, there we go. Top of the Games Master Pops are bomb the base with the Mega Blast riff from Xenon 2. Still the best tune in any game. Anything in the program, you can call the Games Master Club. We'll give you the number at the end of the show. Now it's time for our celebrity challenge, and we'll go over to Games Master to find out what it is. It's time to go to the muscle and hyperbole of the World Wrestling Federation. Yes! Didn't have anything like that in my day, but rather fun, isn't it? The first person to achieve a fall and holding your opponent's shoulder to the canvas for three seconds, for those of you who don't know, uh, wins. So flex those biceps and prepare to grapple. <laughs> no one likes a good grapple more than I do, and I am positively dribbling at the prospect of this bout. We have in the red corner, weighing in at six stone, the Hertfordshire hero, David Kay, and his opponent tonight, weighing in at considerably more than six stone, the most feared man in British wrestling, Kendo Nagasaki! Yeah, the big man never speaks. Yeah, it is. It's Assault. Team from Assault from Precinct 13. Now, how do you fancy your yeah. chances against the man who has pasted Big Daddy in the past? Um, a bit confident, but I'll see how it goes. Okay, that's great. Now, you're against Kendo. Or uh, can I call you Ken? Okay. <laughs> um, how do you fancy a chance against David? He's uh, a bit smaller than your average opponent. Dominic, Dominic, excuse me. I'm sorry, who are you? I'm Lloyd Ryan, Kendo's manager. I'm afraid you'll have to talk to me because Kendo won't speak to anybody. Okay, then one perhaps you can answer then. How do you think Kendo will rate against an opponent that's somewhat smaller than he's used to? Um, I think you'll beat him quite easy. If you can beat people like Giant Haystacks and Pat Roach, I think this little fella here is going to be quite a walkover. Well, I wonder what our audience has to say about that. <laughs> okay, well, it looks like it's building up to a thrilling contest between the young contender from Hertfordshire and the fearsome grappler, Kendo Nagasaki. If you want to see the outcome, join us after the break. 
Place your bets, folks. Who's going to win? Kendo Nagasaki or that wee dick in the blue jumper? Welcome back. If you've just joined us, then we're eagerly awaiting the bout of the century between young David Kay, the Hertfordshire hero, and the fearsome Kendo Nagasaki. <laughs> With me at ringside, as always, is Jazz Rigno. Welcome, Jazz. Hiya. How do you see the fight going between young David and big Kendo? It's going to be a tricky one. I think what he needs to do is use kicks and punches to wear down the energy and then go for a quick pin. Right, and in fact, David is actually... Yeah, don't guess if you know who won it, if you've seen it before. That's a fight that Grapple fans in Britain have long wanted to see. Kendall Nagasaki against Hulk Hogan. Are the competitors ready? Seconds out, round one. <laughs> He's smart. And Hulk Hogan, oh, a flying kick misses Kendall completely, though. Kendall's pacing around his body, and Kendall tries a flying kick, and he misses it. Hulk gets it, Hulk gets it, though, Hulk gets it, though. Hulk gonna try and body slam. Oh my goodness me! Hulk misses completely with a flying kick. Misses with a punch as well. Slams Kendo down. He's looking to get him for the. Oh, and he's got an elbow drop. One elbow drop. Julian Rignall. What an exciting start to this fight. He's doing well. He needs to get in there. Oh, he's going up the oh post. Oh my God! He's, he's going got the for the post. Flying leap. Oh, and he's just missed the flying leap. Yeah, yeah that was the, uh, the old Hulk splash down. Oh, he's got him again. What a what a tremendous player this Hulk Hogan is here. Hulk hasn't lost any energy yet. He's, he's knocking fuck out of Kendall. Kendo. This has to be said. Yeah, this game is utter shit. Right, so the longer Kendall goes without being hit, his energy actually goes back up again. Yes. Oh my god, Hendo's climbing up the poke of the corner post. Well, he's taking the leap, but uh, Hulk's gone. Yeah, uh, he went for the drop kick and completely missed it there. It was an okay, opportunity now Hulk's wasted. behind him, Hulk's picked up his corner, he's going to post. No, he's going, he's going up to the corner post again. Hulk he tries to jump, but he just misses. No, oh, he's out of the ring. He's out of the ring. He oh my could god, mess he it must up get, here unless he plants it in there. So he's oh no, he's back <laughs> and then tries another jump, just misses Kendall. Kendall's down. He's going to try and go for the pin. He's got from behind, flung him over the shoulder. One elbow drop. Right he's in got him. He's got him. Oh! Kendall's picked yourself. There's a character. <laughs> Amazingly, one of the characters in this game was just called yourself. In case you want to wrestle as yourself, so that's who Kendo's picked, it's just yourself. There we go. We dick. David, congratulations. One fall in the very first round. You certainly gave Kendo a pasting there. Sure did. Well, we'd like to oh, you congratulations dick. and a couple of very special prizes. Firstly, the prize that everybody wants to get their hands on, our special humongous Golden Games Master joystick. Thank you. And as a little extra, the official <laughs> WWF Championship belt. Congratulations, David. Thank you. I'll wrestle you for the belt right now, you wee prick. Now, now, Mr. Ryan, what have you got to say about Kendo's defeat? I haven't got to say anything about Kendo's defeat. I think we've been conned and we're not staying in here. We're going. Well, well, all I can say is there's no place for losers on this show, only winners. But sometimes even winners have problems. And if you're stuck in a particular game, why not write in to up a touch. Agony Uncle, okay. Games Master? Yeah, sorry, the volume's temperamental with these. I'm just wary of me of it getting too loud so that when I speak at the same time it gets it becomes messy, but we'll Hello, games go master. with this. Oh, I'm delighted to see you. Welcome to my kingdom. Now, are we ready? On Zelda, I can't for the life of me find the whistle in the second quest. Do you know where it is? I do indeed, young man. And locating it requires a modicum of initiative. The whistle is in the blank square in the middle of the level. To get there, you need to go through to the room directly above it, and then walk down cool. through the wall. The wall is false. Have you got that? Yes, thanks very much. Splendid. Well, go and try. Uh, who's next up, I think? Hello, Games Master. Now, what can I do for you? I keep getting killed as I run down the snow hill on the second stage of Strider. What am I doing wrong? Hmm. Hmm. You're being shy at it, mate. Let's see, if I remember correctly, the secret there is not to run at all, but rather to jump as you start your descent and keep on jumping until you approach the bottom. 
That virtual reality headset was actually a legit thing in arcades at the time. The company called Virtuality made them. Um, I'm sure I've got a documentary somewhere I'll try and dig out at some point, uh, showing it in action. Uh, next please, I'm who we have now. Hello, Games Master. In Mega Man, how do you kill the big iron Sandman? I'm finding it's impossible to get past him. Fucking get a grip, mate. Death and destruction. At least they're all villains, I suppose. Now listen. To dispose of the big orange sandman, you'll need to jump over He's his in Smash Brothers, isn't he? Come onto the screen. And then, when he is completely formed, use your LX gun to shoot him in the eye. Does that satisfy your destructive lust? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Well, enough good deeds for the time being. See you along. So, some juicy computer tidbits this week. Now for our final challenge, let's see what Games Master has planned. Hello. I thought tonight we'd go out with a flurry on Thunder Force 3. Your mission is to get to the underwater world of Sire. One of the best shooters Just on Mega Drive. Up a little, I thought we'd have a bit of a hoot and put it on the rather tricky Mania mode. As well as negotiating with treacherous currents, you'll need to avoid um, or destroy all manner of mutant hybrids hell-bent on your destruction. Only then will you be able to take on the decidedly resilient Heisein End of Level Guardian, the last obstacle between you and the glory. Good luck. It was notoriously end. difficult at the time, especially on Mania difficulty, so it be interesting. And his way through all manner of underwater opposition is tonight's final contestant, Jeremy Gomez. Yeah, he's been quiet on the, on the euphemism front this time. I think he's been dealing with a lot of kids, he might crack one out here, <laughs> so to speak. Planet Siren on Mania level. It's going to be pretty tough, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. How do you fancy your chances? <laughs> Sign Brew Extra, to be fair. I'm not exactly confident, but I'll have go. Okay, because it's the toughest level. Yeah. Zero calories. Well, Jim, you've got a lovely t-shirt, so I wish you all the best. <laughs> um, if you'd like to sit in a hot seat, we'll get ready to play. Okay, thanks. And joining me for a furious thrash in the pulpit is Neil West from Sega <laughs> we Power. Welcome, Neil. Hi. Now, Neil, I'm not kidding this time. This is a tough game. This is very tough. Thunder Force 3 is a tough game. At the best no, I don't think it is. Are you th levels, thinking it's, of it's impossible. Um, there is one Thunder Blade? That I would give Jeremy, um, and that's make use of the weapons. You can pick up new ones as you go along, and you get two different ones to start off with, and they are useful for different things. So just make the most of those. Okay, then. Right, so, Jeremy, you have to get to the end of the level and kill the Guardian. Neil says use your weapon wisely. Are you ready? I, 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 I would count that as well. Off he goes. Use your weapon wisely. But it's going to change quickly, Neil. It certainly will. Oh, he's, he's bought one already. already. Those tranquil little bubbles actually will buffet your ship around, often knocking you into um, enemies, so you've really got to watch out for them. Okay, not the best of starts, but he's got lovely little no, mutant shellfish. How old is he? I don't, don't know. Let me look it up. It really is impossible. Now, what's his okay. W then? Pick up that Curious. W. I want to say late 20s, Press early 30s. And then he'll be able to switch on to a different weapon, which he ought to do very soon. He's chosen not to at the moment. There he goes. Oh, he's oh, got it and he's lost it already. He got it, then he lost it. He now, he's come out to a very tight passage here. He's born in 69, so... Even more tricky, just got to keep a cool head and keep... Oh, he's born he's again! He's and he got... just missed an extra life as well, that was a big mistake. Oh my god, mutant lobster with a body yeah, sheet and right. helmet he's on. He's got to kill this thing 24, off. 24, 25 at this point. He'll now get a shot Oh, he's reverse. fighting out yeah. of his derriere. Oh, he's dodged them he quite dodged well. He dodged very well indeed, but the trouble isn't over yet. Oh no, he's on his last night now. Things aren't looking good for Jeremy. Not I pity him out there. Not good at all. Okay, it's cleaned up a bit now. Not too much going on screen, but he still is now the woods. He's, he's aiming in the wrong part to destroy he is, that. He is, he is. He won't hit him on the helmet because the helmet's invincible. Okay, oh, oh. Well done. Well Lovely maneuvering there. Oh, oh my god. Straight from the top. Right on his head. Stomped him a bit. Give him over Jeremy. I freaking count a very tight passage and hit him on the helmet. They definitely both count, like. Oh, Alex, you've pretty much missed the first episode, but we've got three more to go, so it's all good. Jeremy, you found that pretty tough going, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> Any bits in particular that were very hard? Uh, well, the current pushing me up and the fact that there wasn't much space to manoeuvre in. So. Yeah. OK, thank you very much again, Jeremy Gomez! Fuck off, you lost. So, with that exhilarating but ultimately fruitless effort, tonight's show comes to an end. Well, it's smoking jacket and steaming jasmine time. We'll see you in seven days for another Games Master. Good night. What a show. What a show.
<laughs> two bottles down. There wasn't even that many euphemisms in that one. You've obviously gone all out. Right, oh, there's a wee club thing. Details yep. about the Games Master Club. We have free t-shirts, new competitions and posters with information about the show. The number to call and please dial carefully is 0891. You can't take a drink for your own euphemisms just so you know. Calls are charged at 36 pence a minute off peak and 48 pence at all other times. If you're under 18, please ask permission before making the call. Well there we go, that was... Episode 7 of Games Master. Let me just quickly tweet that we're about to do episode 8 and then we'll get straight to it. Give me a sec. Do, 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 do. As ever, please do share the link and get other folks involved, the more people watching it, the more bants, I believe they call it. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, it may, uh, to be fair, a lot of those hotlines were very similar uh, phone numbers, so I wouldn't be surprised. Right, let's get episode 8 up and running, shall we? Boop, boop, boop. Evening, mate. That intro is still amazing. And your granny kept under a favourite chair next to a mint humbugs. Games reviews, tips and chats, and a lovely little souffle recipe from my auntie Marisha all add up to a piping hot show delivered warm into your inviting lap. Now, for the first of our game playing challenges, let's go over to a man who's had my auntie's souffle and come back for more, the Games Master. Welcome to my kingdom, where games are generated and challenges conceived. I am so pleased you've been able to join me once again. The first of my little <laughs> challenges this week involved a decidedly feisty young superhero by the name of Strider. I love Strider. What a game. To guide him through the Russian city of Kazafu and to defeat the city's... They brought that back a few years back, didn't they? But I'd like another one. The forces of good are depending on you. Try not to let them down. And attempting to stride magnificently through the perils of this challenge is a young man from Harrow. Please fly yeah, it was difficult. for Chevron Hart. Chevron, what a name. Yeah, I've still not played the remake yet. I heard it was good. I'd, I'd rather have a more kind of old school looking one though. challenge is pretty much impossible. Are you confident? Yep. Well, I have my doubt, Chevron, but I wish you all the best. Like Chevron's an amazing name. Our games playing chair, we'll get ready to begin. And back again with us in the commentator's pulpit is Neil West from Sega Power. Welcome back, Neil. Hi, Dominic. Now, Neil, this is a very tough challenge. What tips can you give Chevron? Yeah, you weren't joking when you said it was near impossible. Um, basically, the time limit is very, very strict. Um, basically, one piece of advice, yeah, make full use of the power-ups. Not only can he get some extra energy, which will help him no end, right. but he can also pick up droids, which will march ahead of him, fly above him, and that will take out most of the baddies if he uses them properly. Okay, well, the challenge is, just to reiterate, Three minutes to get to and destroy the end of level guardian on level one. It's a very tough challenge. Are you ready, Chevron? Fucking right, he's ready, mate. Look at him, he's built for it. Okay, and he's off. Okay, now what's his first initial obstacles he's Okay, overcoming? but these first few baddies are really no problem. He can just flex his arm. He's got this lightsaber, which is very... Yeah, I get the feel a lot of these episodes were filmed on the same day and then just... Uh, cut up. Oh, they're in a church. Every every series is set in a different location for no reason. Oh no, he's just taking a walk from that guy 
I lost one energy bar That's there. That's right. You see the green energy bars up at the top. He started with three. He's now down to two. Okay, now he's... Now there we go. Now we've ah. got a droid. That will walk down ahead of him, sort out the baddies for him. The only trouble is it's quite slow, so it might hold him up. Right. This is tricky. Now he's got... He can do two things. He can either wait for them to lift, which is what he did. That cost him time. He could, however, have slid underneath them. Okay. Oh now my world, Charles Atlas here. How's he going to do that? <laughs> now down to the first boss. There's a definite method to this and he's got it. Oh, you wait so under there and you just hammer him. Ah, oh, this guy's got it. Okay. Big Chevron knows the score. One minute gone, he's got three minutes to do this challenge. I love this game. Well Definitely worth tracking down if you've never played Strider. Now he's got the droid below him and he's got the eagle above him. That should take care of a lot of the baddies. Oh, what's this horrific, war. humongous thing coming? Okay, it took a hit. It took half a hit. You see one of the energy meters is down to red. Right. So he's got one and a half left. Climbing up here. That's the next up. Oh. There you go. He's got an extra energy bar. Oh, you humongous. But he lost it again. He lost it again. Okay, he's not doing too bad at all. He's down to half energy. He's about halfway through. Okay, one yeah, it does. It's a bit close in, isn't it? He got another energy bar, and if he grabs that, he'll have a big sword. Now, he mustn't waste too much time. Yeah, I might do that at some point. Okay, down the hill. Okay, he's leaping to save time. Oh, very good. Move. Lovely leaped over yep, the spider. Well, he knew that was coming there. up. Okay. Now, where are we now? Here. Right, he must crouch down, and he's got it. Oh, is there some kind of yep. laser defense? That's system? right. Um, guarding the um, catacombs underneath. There you go. He's made it. Oh, yes. What a smooth as a bang. Yeah, he's got this. He's, got this. he's nearly done it. Took out the laser beam while he was falling. It's the very snake very thing at the end, and then that's him. Two minutes now. He's got one minute oh. left. Oh, my God, that's a lovely, lovely piece of acrobatics, after all. He took a good shortcut. He's now down to the boss. Now he's got to now, work out Oh, my God, they're all jumping together. Here we go. What are they Here doing? Here we go. This is a caterpillar with its brandishing its... Oh, my God, he's got him already. It's gone. No problems whatsoever. 45 seconds to spare. Chef from his short work of that. He deserves a joystick. He's fucking nailed that. Champion. Champ Vron. Well done, Chef Vron. Chevron, that was unbelievable. I said at the start I thought it was impossible, but you proved me wrong. Was there any point where you thought, Dominic's right, it is impossible? When my energy went down at first, I was a bit worried, and the only difficult was the time. Yeah, yeah, but you leap past those spiders, especially. I thought we were going to snarl you a bit, but they didn't. But Chevron, you win one of the most prestigious and certainly the most aesthetic prize in television, our Golden Games Master Joystick! <laughs> Cool, calm, collected, fucking riding off into the sun. Joystick under his arm, what a fucking hero to the masses. And as Chevron and his joystick stride majestically into the sunset, we'll take a <laughs> Didn't even know he was going to say that. But there we go. Is anyone, is anyone else having issues with the sound? I'm wary of turning it up too loud. Oh no, I think that was actually an old message that just appeared again. Sorry, never mind. complicated, but you're quite chuffed. You can actually get out of the hangar and take off. It was complicated enough to be interesting, but not over complicated, so you got bored of it. If you're, if you're sort of a, more of a train spotter, sort of a flight sim fan, then who wants everything to be accurate, you'll love it. The frame rate on that. People say 30 is unacceptable these days. Don't know how good you've got it. Next up on the Mega Drive, pick out those bogeys with a sidewinder or two in F22 Interceptor. Loads and loads of hours of play there. Brilliant stuff, great graphics, great sound. On F22, I just felt a little bit detached, a little bit removed. Maybe the colour's just a bit too bright, I'm not sure. Something looked constantly about it and not a simulation. F22 was not very good because it was just too... There's two complicated controls on the joypad. Nobody does mind it, to be fair. It's, it's quite the voice. I've been told. <laughs> By no one. Finally, on the Amiga, Pip Pip Tally Ho whacks that moustache and chalks away in the World War One simulation, Knights of the Sky. Uh, Knights of the Sky is good simply because it takes you back to the basics of seat of the pants flying, as it was World War One star. The only drawback to Knights of the Sky... It's not ideal if you can take off. Really. I mean, one shot and they go down in loads of flames. <laughs> you seem to like it though. They could take off. Now for our new game section. A game that's bound to get flight simulation fans rubbing their helmets with glee when it's released later this year is Attack. 
Julia Coombs from Microprose Software gives us a sneak preview. There we go. Attack is set in the year 2001. It's in Colombia. You assume the role of supreme commander of a US government controlled um, undercover agency. There are no set missions in attack. There's just one overall objective, and that is to bankrupt um, the drug barons of Colombia. Yeah, that was not even subtle, rubbing their helmets with glee. the parameters that are set by current flight simulators on the market at the moment, because not only is there a true-to-life flight simulation aspect to the game, but there's also a huge strategy element in there as well. information about anything in the program you can call the games master club we'll give you the number at the end of the show <laughs> i'm amazed to get away with it but there now you we're go going to our celebrity challenge and here to detail it once again is the games master hello again as you probably noticed by now i'm rather partial to a bit of sport men sauna incorporate sauna as they say for this week's second challenge i thought i'd drop for a rather quirky new sport called baseball if you don't know the rules, it's rather like our rounders. Contestants will have one innings each in which to score as many runs as possible. An innings is over when three It's a Neo Geo game, isn't it? Yeah, I like this. So keep your eye on the ball and give it your They had a futuristic shot. version of it as well, which is quite good. And to play this challenge, we are very lucky to have world Neo Geo baseball champion Emily Cash, who will be playing a husband who by some strange quirk of fate is a pretty big hitter himself, 1987 Wimbledon champion, Pat Cash. Oofed. I seriously doubt Pat Cash's wife is a world Neo Geo fucking baseball champion. Now, Emily, if I could start with you, you're obviously the pre-match favourite. Are you going to crush Pat into the ground tonight? Pulverise him. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's good to see. Now, Pat, you're a pretty big hitter on the court. Are we going to see that converted into a lot of home runs? Well, I hope so. I mean, I've got a, I've got a good eye for it, but, you know, she's a, ter a terrific pitcher, so... Uh, no, I might have to. I might have to win it with my pitching. I'm not sure. Okay, well we've obviously it. got a bit of a grudge match here. You you calm yourself, Dominic. Careful. Cash, join us after these messages. Well, Pat Cash was a tennis legend back in the day. Tim Boone. Back to Games Master. We are ready for a thrilling baseball contest between Emily Cash, who's playing the Wild Flowers baseball team, and her husband, 1987 Wimbledon champion Pat Cash, who's opted for the comic Astro Boys. With me in the commentating box is Tim Boone from Computer and Video Games Magazine. Tim, welcome to the ballpark. Hi, Dominic. Now, general tips for our two players today. One innings each, they've got to score quickly. Absolutely. Well, Pat's, Pat's up to bat first, and he's got to hit it as hard and fast as he can. With just one innings and no time for mistakes, he's got to go for those home runs. Emily's got to pitch well, field well, which means catching the ball whenever possible, and coordinating our fielders at all times. It's going to be a tense match, this. Okay, and we must remember, at one innings each, if there's no runs, it goes down to hits. <laughs> so every single swing it. of the bat is important. Are our competitors ready? Absolutely. Then let's play ball. And we have Emily pitching first to Pat. He's going to start off with a nice strong pitcher, I feel. And it's oh, a nice little swingy pinch go. away from Pat. It's not going to be enough. Yes. Get fucked. Okay, so comes for the second one. Oh, again, a small hit. But he could get away with this one. It's going to be very close. He goes to the first base. Pat's running in and he's just made it. He's safe. So he's going for third man in. And he's... Oh. Oh, a little strike there. Strike Loading one. rising ball there from Emily. Emily altering her pitches very well in this game. Pat swings again. A little ground ball here. Run. Is he going to make it? Could be a one She's no fucking world six. champion at this game. Wayne, well. don't talk shit. Jeff of the Comic Astro Boys. Emily pitches. Swing. A great hit, used very well. All of a sudden, Pat's in a very strong position. One run, two men on base, Tim. Yep. Emily comes in, and she's got to keep this tight. And Pat's the <laughs> you Imagine all you like, but it's not the case. <laughs> it could be a double play by Emily here. Oh, but in fact, Pat is safe there. Big fielding error from Emily there. No, in fact, she was playing safe because if you see, she's got, uh, Pat's got a player on Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. It's, they were certainly rich enough to so afford one. Right. Thank you for correcting me. Pat Trash. 
Very important. Strike out needed. Yes, yeah, criteria. Last strike coming up. And here it comes again. And it comes in. Oh, what is it? Yeah, yeah. And could it be gone from? Could it be out? Is it going to be caught? No, it's not. And it's going to She's shy at this, mate. I'm not having this at all. It's going to be very, very good. Yes! Accepted by the pitcher and not proved to be the undoing. 2 0 to Pai Cash. Again, two men on the bases. Great position for Pat to be in. Swings again. Pat hits it again. The base and load is coming in for another home run here. And this is looking. Oh! Could be getting a second. His bat's running for a second. Will Emily get it to home base first of all? I think she's chosen the wrong base. She has indeed. Pat Cash. This episode's going to last Emily. fucking eight years. Yeah, absolutely. No room for mistakes in this game. Pat's now four up. And only one out here. Absolutely. Emily pitches in again. Oh, right one. Maybe that one pitching very well. But Pat is batting extremely well. He just got the timing exactly right on this game. Oh. Nicely left by Pat Cash at the ball. Missed the plate, so it was called as a ball. Swings it again. That's over the plate for Pat. Oh, it's straight to the pitcher. Oh, great. The first base. It's out. Fantastic it's play. Oh. Fantastic play from Emily there. Emily got the first one out, but missed the Video game versions of baseball aren't exactly the most exciting things to watch. Yeah, Neo Geo looked incredible at the time. Bring back Chevron. Chevron should play. Chevron would turn up and just fucking tear Pat Cash apart. Come on. Emily pitches in. Finally. But Pat there with a total of five runs, six hits. It looks like the coming Astro Boys are going to win this one. Yep, very little Pat could have done there against those pitches. But then again, he's five up now. Emily's got her work cut out. So Pat pitched in Emily, the first pitch in there. Emily hits it. Ground run for one, but I think she's fucked. Oh, I like yes. baseball, to be fair. Just not this baseball. As well. That's right. Anything can happen. Pitches in again. Oh, a nice little pinch there. And she's going to make it to first base. Pat's throwing the ball, and it's going to be better than it goes. Oh, this is where Emily needs the big hit to stay in the frame. Here. She's got to have a really big, she's got to go for home run. So it's up to Orchid of the Wild Flowers here. Very, very nervous times here in the game's master ballpark. Switch. Emily, nice little pinch one, but it's going to be better. Oh! A fielding error by Pat there lets Emily get the first base. I think that field has gone, <laughs> gone short sighted somehow. Pat pitches into Emily, swings it. Oh, another great hit. This is looking dangerous. This is looking very dangerous indeed. Oh, but oh. it's safe. This is the world champion of being shite at baseball, I think. From Pat. Yeah, he's obviously proved he's gonna, he can hit them when it comes to catching them and throwing them. Oh dear, it's different thing altogether. Different ball game. Again, very tense here. Pat pitches in. That's a big hit from Emily. Oh my word. Two men on the base here, one of them's going to run the third. I think we're going to see it out here. Oh, what is it saying again? See that? Oh, she's fucked it. One is running to the same base. Pat tied one of them, so it's the end of the ball game. Pat is the winner. That was awkward. Um, yeah, there's loads of baseball games on PlayStation 4, not the kind of cartoony ones, it's mostly serious ones. Uh, for some reason, Sony's got kind of the... MLB Major League Baseball license wrapped up, so you only get MLB the show on PlayStation 4 and nothing else. There's one, there's a drink. He was banging you all over the ballpark, he just said. You smashed your poor wife into far reaches, never even explored by baseball. Nah, I think she let me win, actually. I mean, she did a couple of fumbles, and, you know, I got a bit lucky there, but, you know, it was a lot of fun. Right, well, it was a very entertaining match, Pat, but unfortunately, there has to be one winner, and it was you. And we'd now like to present you with the ultimate television prize, the Golden Games Master Joystick. Careful, Dominic. After that hectic encounter, let's find out the latest tips and cheats in Games Master's consultation zone. Hello, young boy. Hello, Games Master. Welcome to my <laughs> Hello, Games Master. And what have you got to ask me? I've been playing the game Link for several months now, and I've found a hidden town, but I cannot find a magic key. Do you know where it is, please? Gonna fucking help us out, mate. Audacious young urchin. Once you reach the hidden town, pick up the spell and then cast it at the far right of the town. He just said I've been playing the game Link. Inside that door, you'll find the magic key. 
Yeah, he must be. He's an actor on fucking Crime Watch. Thank you. Who's next, please? Thank you, Giza. Hello, Games Master. Oh, I'm delighted to see you. Welcome to my kingdom. I've heard that there's a hidden room on level two of Alex Kidd. I've been looking everywhere for it, but I just can't find it. Where should I be looking? Oh dear, oh dear, we really are rather behind, aren't we? You will find the room just past the king. Get Alex Kidd to fuck. No one. If it's not the Mega Drive one, so it's not worth bothering with. Down to break the rocks underground, and the hidden entrance to the room will reveal itself. Thanks. Bye. Well, I'm always here to help. Yeah, you Zelda. I love Zelda too. I think. I wonder who it is. Hello, Games Master. Fucking Harry I Potter. I getting killed trying to get past the robot dinosaur at the end of Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters. Is there any advice you can give me? Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters. Oh yes, rather a tricky one. This. You need to place your character against the grey door to the right of the screen. Then waggle your joystick left and right while continually dropping bombs. This will eventually result in you stepping through the gap in the doors. And yeah, the I, I don't like it. people calling them Alex right. the Kid. Thanks very much. Oh well, I'm starting to feel rather weary. Enough pearls of wisdom for one week, I think. But don't forget to keep the queries coming. Now we go on to our eagerly awaited third challenge. Let's go to Games Master. After the rather frivolous antics of the previous challenge, I felt we should perhaps end tonight's show on a slightly more serious note. I've therefore come for a little puzzle from the game Terminator 2. Oh, I know it's coming here. In which to reassemble the robots. Long time official Nintendo magazine readers are going to love this. Will smile. As Let's hope it'll be no problem. It's Martin, Martin Mathers that does this. Who used to write for Fish and Nintendo magazine with me? Why not throw this challenge out to the members of our fluffy congregation? So this was fixed again. It was so Martin who was chosen for it. Their chance at a few minutes of fame by tackling the Terminator challenge. Could you please thrust their arms up in an orderly manner? He didn't want me to show this episode because he was in it, but um, tough shit, Mark. Tough that shit. That gentleman there, would you like to come on down? Let's give him a round of applause. There he is. Official Nintendo Magazine, former uh, deputy editor, I believe. And your name is Martin. And where are you from, Martin? I'm from Stanmore, Middlesex. Right, now do you know the Terminator 2 game? Oh uh, yeah. So Probably. you're familiar with our puzzle challenge? Yeah. If you'd like to plonk yourself down in our hot seat, we'll get ready to start the game. He's familiar, but he's going to fuck it. And joining me in the pulpit again is Tom Watson from Renegade. Hello again, Tom. Hello again, Dominic. Now, this is a bit of a tough challenge, this Terminator one, isn't it? <laughs> it is a bit. I think we'll all recognise the game principle, but seeing it on a computer screen really does change it. And, of course, there's a timer. So yeah, Martin's going to be on the podcast at some point, okay, so... Then. Martin, are you ready? That'll be good. Then get solving that puzzle. Right, so Tom, what should um, Martin's general tactics be? We know the puzzle, but how does it change in a computer format? Well, I think one of the things... To be fair to him, I always hated these fucking sliding puzzles. Bottom right, which will give him the clue, albeit in black I can never do these. ...of what he has to do in getting Arnie's face back together again. <laughs> That's a joystick, though. ...is between the uh, original physical. We can actually see he's getting the eyebrow section in there. And he's just lining that up nicely. Right. One of the real differences here is that you don't have the, that you know, sort of sense of touch and the ability to see the pieces closely. Uh, he's got 65 seconds left, so he seems to be doing okay. They seem to be yeah, Mar's a good guy. Right, that's good. Yeah, Very right, opinionated, <laughs> but a good guy. Uh, getting the flesh out yeah, I'll, I'll get him on the podcast at some point. He says he's up for so it. There, that drops into place. Yeah, I think he's uh, doing quite well. Right, 50 seconds, just about halfway through his time. The crowd are giving him their encouragement. Yeah, I used to get those shitty ones with like nine numbers in them, like numbered one to eight and with a hole and you had to fucking do them and they were terrible. It has this habit of doing that. He's got one piece just slightly out of position. There it goes, the eye. Now he's got to get the right-hand side of the eye into place. He's trying to work it around, but he's, as you can see, he's got the flesh in the way. It's not quite going. The time is ticking down. There's only 22 seconds. It doesn't help it. Like it doesn't help that those pieces are really hard to kind of tell apart. Any advice for him? Well, he's got that section, yes, he's working down the bridge of the nose now. He really needs to get that central forehead piece into position. Yeah, he's definitely. Seven seconds. Oh, okay, six, five, four, three, he's not going to make it through. One, oh, and he's just got it. Fucked it. it. I still have stuff. Don't worry, though, he comes back. Um, in a later series and fucking romps it so don't feel too bad for him 
the pieces were harder to spot where they actually went and I couldn't slot them in together. And well, we were all ooing and eyeing. Everybody here, you put up an incredibly good show. Thank you very much for coming in to play games, Master. Martin. Oh. And that's all for tonight's show. I'm off for an L Grey. Keep snug and warm till next week. Good night. There we go. Episode 8. An episode of highs and lows. An overly long baseball game. And then a former O&M deputy editor failing the Terminator. Uh, you can decide for yourself what the highs and what the lows were. Um, another another gem uh, of an episode. And Chevron, of course. The legendary Chevron. wonder if we'll ever see him again we'll try and find him we'll try and track him down see if he's on twitter an 80 year old chevron the games master club we have free t-shirts new competitions and posters with information about the show the number to call and please dial care oh, he's a fucking rocket surgeon or something now 600 123 calls are charged at 36 pence a minute off peak and 48 pence at all other times if you're under 18 please ask permission before making the call I wonder what that number, uh, uh, what what phones now? If you what what you get now if you phone that number, but anyway, let's not dwell on it. Let me do another tweet to tell people that, um, Games Master episode nine is coming up. Just give me one second. Bosh. Right, let's do it. I'm not ringing it. It's a fucking 089. Well, it costs about 400 quid. Uh, right. Episode 9. Fucking roasting. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Games Master. If it's 6.30 and it's Channel 4, then get ready for the most succulent half hour of the week. If you're not tuned to Channel 4, then I suggest you get your television fixed because you're picking it up somehow. If it's not 6.30, then you are in fact dreaming about me, which is intensely flattering, but doesn't help the ratings. Tonight we have our usual Lancashire hot pot of a show with news, tips, reviews and the first of our game playing challenges to be set by the man who rules the circuits with a somewhat fluffy rod, the Games Master. Fluffy rod, does that Greetings. count? I am absolutely delighted that you've decided once again to pitch your skills against one of my little challenges. Let's hope you've got what it takes to be successful. Okay, so I don't think Games Master first would be as good if they brought it back. I thought we'd have some fun on Zany Golf. It would be different. A oh, Zany window. Golf? Telescopic walls. Really itchy These are just I can't some of the it. oddities you'll need to negotiate if you're going to win. The person who completes the most holes without running out of shots will be the victor. So keep a steady hand and beware of those yips. Our contestants for this challenge have a somewhat Oedipal bent to them. A father and son contest <laughs> who can keep the nerve in the sudden death playoff. Please give a warm Games Master welcome to Nigel and Adam Bolton. I had the Mega Drive version of this, but I think this is the Amiga one, so it looks like a mouse cursor. Look at this wee dick. The guy with the fucking vest. Now, <laughs> Nigel, if, um, if I can start with you, Nigel, it's very good Nigel's to, in see, jail to see, now. how shall I say, the older games player on the show. Who plays the most games in the house, then? Oh, he does, definitely. Right, but you still wrestle the joystick off him now and again? Constantly. Oh. Can't keep away from it. 
Okay. Now, Careful. Adam, how do you fancy your chances against your dad? Who usually wins at the games? Well, usually it's me, but sometimes my dad can win it. It depends what type of game it is, really. Okay, if you'd like to go and take your places in the hot seat, we'll get ready to begin the game. Joining me for even more punishment in the pulpit is Tim Boone from Computer and Video Games magazine. Hello, Welcome Dominic. back, Tim. Thanks. Now, what's general tips you could give the players for zany golf? Well, <laughs> well, Kim. Something to come at you, give you some trouble. Even you in fucking '92, okay, that was a terrible look. Then. Surely. Are the two competitors ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Adam, tee off. Now, Tim, where's the hole in this first screen? You can't actually see the hole on the screen here. It's actually hidden at the, towards the bottom. But to get there, what Adam needs to do is to put the ball. Down the yeah, shoot, supposed to be the Amiga version. The arrows, right. To get to the bottom, which is exactly what he's just done. Down I goes. see. So where will that come out? It's then? rolling out of the lighthouse, just behind the roof. All right. So quite a safe a first shot. Safe right. shot. Okay. Now his father Nigel here. I wonder if you'll try a different approach. Nigel can go for something a bit spectacular. <laughs> if he hits it really hard at the top, he can actually go through the windmill for bonus points. But I don't know if he feels that confident about right. it. No. Oh, oh no. no. Disastrous first shot. Disastrous. Oh, and he's right back. <laughs> Still. He's further, further back than when he began. Absolutely. Oh, no, you've yeah, we'll fucked it, bud. Of this. So what can we see him doing? Oh, he's taking the shot already, and he's yep. going to bounce off the fence, I think, into quite a nice straight position. Adam's actually taken a very careful shot. What he's done is lined himself up, so he's straight onto the hole. Okay. Away he goes. Oh, off is the it? Wall. Oh, yeah, that's no. the thing. There's a lot of scope for stroke oh, yeah, jokes, so but you wonder if two shots is not having a wee laddie on there is maybe, maybe going, gonna, gonna get him okay, to okay, calm it a bit. Adam, he's in a very, very good position. And Adam, good when kids off. are involved, he tends to, to rein it in a bit. So again, he can afford to be really cautious here, can't he? Yeah. Oh, but he's let go with that one. Oh, could that? Oh, he's just missed that. Meanwhile, Nigel has three shots left. Next time, Dominic, he's going to get a game they're both one. fucking good at. Maybe he can. I think that's exactly what he's going for. He's in. Oh, oh no! Now that's more like it. Back on the oh, excellent, excellent shot. Now immediately, Nigel leaps back in that game. But here comes Adam here, going trying to sink this pot with this one. He's got quite a lot of strength on his mouse bar there. It's very, very tense here indeed. Oh! Oh, rebounding, and in he goes. oh you wee dick! I don't like, I don't like him. I was going to say I hope, I hope so his dad beats him, but <laughs> that could be misconstrued. He's only got the one shot left, and he's in. Oh, he's in with it. Went for break, scored, excellent recovery. At one stage, we all thought he was doomed. That's he's right, back. we thought he was out of the ball game, but as it is, we're going to go into the second hole, where in fact, Nigel, because of him going through the windmill, it's a stroke ahead. Absolutely. Yes! The hole is somewhere over to the right. You can't see it on the screen. If you make a mistake, you can end up in completely the wrong place. Okay. It's very important that you get this right. And basically, to get it right, you have to jump, go over the first wall be, and rebound with the second. So a very crucial first stroke. Adam must know the trick. If he gets it wrong, I, uh, oh, he's got it wrong. But he could be very, very lucky here. Oh, is this going to s- Oh, it's down here. Oh, my word. He was very nearly extremely lucky. But now we come on to Nigel here. <laughs> yeah, really yeah, maybe take it out of context. As long as he can negotiate the rules correctly, that's the important thing. But again, if you Come on, Nigel, here, fucking you could well be in trouble. Absolutely. Oh, oh, him. oh Nigel. Oh, Ruthless. Oh, that's your son, mate. Oh, very close indeed. Oh, dear. So I'm afraid... Look at him, look at him. Fucking yeah. aggression. Ruthless aggression. Use this hill. To, to, to toothless ag- oh. the was that was oh, toothless aggression was Chris Ben wow let's not go there it's going to rebound leaving him up with quite a straight shot but he's only got one stroke left absolutely it's going to be very tough now Nigel has played this whole to perfection so far. I don't know but the first series was only 10 episodes so maybe okay, maybe they did the 10 over like a couple of days here. Adam prepares for his last stroke quite a straight shot but he doesn't want to overplay it Tim absolutely he's got to get this, this bang on I think he's looking not too bad with that Oh, and I see. Oh, oh, he's just missed it. Oh, no! Tragedy. For <laughs> this young is horrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys' no, dreams being crushed. Left. This could be getting quite tense for Two left. Nigel he needs one well. straight shot. He needs to get that. He needs to get I've tried to show Louise this, but I don't think she gets it. And here it goes. And he's, and he's sunk it. And Nigel is the winner. That is horrible. <laughs> Look at him. He, that moment there, he realised I've just beat my fucking laddie at golf on live TV. Well, not live, pre recorded TV. I fucking lost my son's trust today. Uh, congratulations, Nigel. You struggled at the start, but that was some shot you pulled out of the windmill at the start. That turned the game, didn't it? Well, I thought I'd lost it, but um, 
excellent show through in the end, doesn't it? Really? <laughs> I couldn't let that wee no, dick get the better of me. Well, um, I tried to, but um, the mouse was still a bit funny. It wasn't like when he was at home. Right. Even at home, the mouse button wasn't so that good. on a good day, you think you could give your yeah. dad a pasting? Yeah. OK. Well, the best golfers win the best prizes, and this is no exception, because the winner here has won a special Games Master Golden Joystick, and that goes to... Oh, hang on a minute. We've just had, uh, we've just had a last-minute judge's decision, in fact, and Nigel has been disqualified for being far too old to play video games in the first place. So I'm afraid the goal... What a fucking twist. That's a fix, mate. Stuart's inquiry on that. Nigel's going to fucking... <laughs> Never mind. Now... <laughs> <laughs> we know how good a game Zenny Golf is. He's not going to be happy for that. You can't always choose a game by its cover. Here to help you decide what to spend your pennies on, <laughs> we now go to our reviews section. The theme for this oh, week is Madden. sports games. First, Madden. First up on the Mega Drive, experience Madden some 80. awesome gridiron action in John Madden 92. Touchdown! John Madden 91 really was the best sports simulation for me of last year. Well, John Madden 92 looks like being the best for this year. It's taken all the basics, the great graphics, the great sound effects of the I do like game. Nigel, though. I'd better. like to see Nigel starting in a video game. Maybe Someone where he's like a killer Madden and you've got to trap him. Uh, Maybe they could call it Nige Trap. Sense of humour and like the ambulance Sorry. comes on if a player's injured and practically runs over the whole team. Excellent. Lots of, lots of things to do. Brilliant in two players. Excellent in one player. Get it now. <laughs> 28! Hut! 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 Next up on the Game Boy, one on one action as you rim and slam dunk with the best of them in NBA All Star Basketball. Stay with us. All the characters from the NBA are there Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Patrick Ewing. You sport for choice, really. And it really is good value. All-Star Basketball could be a good game for you if you like one-on-one, -on -one, but if you're looking for a normal game of basketball with two teams, then it's yeah, not worth fuck it. Fuck off, mate. It's not basketball, it's one-on-one, -on -one, run about, run up to the basket, roll <laughs> the ball. <laughs> sure rim does count, but if you want to have a drink, go for it. Finally, on the Amiga. Thrill to the sound of leather on willow and the feel of a googly or two in Graham Gooch cricket. I'm a big cricket fan and I like the idea of a cricket. You're fuck about cricket, mate. Somehow, Sorry to any cricket Graham fans, but cricket really does the I'm Scottish, so there you go. From what I've seen, it's just stand in the middle of the pitch, wiggle the joystick or the mouse, and hope for the best. Uh, not <laughs> Gooch I've doesn't count. That's his name. <laughs> Feeling a googly or two, that, that, I think that counts though. And finally, it's time to announce the winners of our Games Master Golden Goals competition on Kickoff 2. We were completely swamped with entries from all you out there who have scored in more spectacular fashion than I have in the past. We picked out what we consider to be the three best, and here they are in reverse order. In third place, Simon Reynolds from Harlow. A lovely long deep ball from midfield finds Arnold on the left. He takes it steadily into the middle and unleashes a left foot rocket into the corner of the net. Oh, shite, mate. In second place, Ian Hollandby from North London. Butrogueno picks up a through ball, dribbles past one player, sends the goal the wrong way and the crowd into Raptor. But the winner, who will receive two tickets to the Rumbleos Cup final with a delightful move from his own penalty area, is Robert Moss from Hertfordshire. Teasing Toshak Not shows one side of the ball, then the other. Sends the defence into disarray and drills the ball home with a deadly display of finishing. Well done, Robert. For more information about anything on the programme, you can call the Games Master Club. We'll give you the number at the end of the show. <laughs> now we go on to our celebrity challenge, and here to detail it, once again, is the Games Master. Hello again. For the second challenge this week, I thought we might take the liberty of indulging in a spot of boxing. The game I've chosen is Final Blow. And your task <laughs> is to pummel your opponent into submission as quickly as possible. all the boxing games to pick. Stuff indeed. So keep your guard up, keep your punches high, and may the best man well, this win. This was early 90s. I don't know if Evander Holyfield's real deal boxing was out at this point. We have two very tough contenders for the title. 
Our first contender is Gary Wilson from Aldershot, and he'll be taking on former British, European and World Featherweight Champion, the Clonus Cyclone, Barry McGuigan. Oof. I never thought Barry McGuigan looked like a boxer. Welcome to Games Master, lads. That guy looks like more of a boxer than Barry McGuigan does. How confident are you for this fight? Have you been training hard? Yeah, Looking I'm little Mike. I've been training really hard, you know, at six every morning, taking the steroids every day. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what your opponent has to say. It is Gary. Uh, Barry, you're a bit of a games player as yourself, aren't you? I'm a bit of a pretender. I think Gary here is a bit of an expert, but I've had this game for a while and I've tried to, I've got a Sega, my son's got a Sega at home and we've been playing it together. Unfortunately, he's been knocking me out all the time. <laughs> okay, well, let's have a good clean fight and come out boxing. If you'd like to take your seats in the hot seat, I'm on about to start. Well, we can taste the tension here at ringside. Taking the steroids, that's amazing. The shot, tame the clone cyclone. For this and many other brutal climaxes, please join us after the break. Yeah, brutal climaxes counts. I'm taking a drink just by pure chance. Welcome back to Games Master. If you've just joined us, the tension here is intense. As young Gary There's a fucking deal going on with Renegade here, by the way. Renegade was a, like a developer a publisher. Boxing contest. Um, with me at ringside to help commentate is Tom Watson from Renegade. So, Tom, I don't know why they've been... The fight going tonight? Obviously Tom Watson was just well, there for that one day or whatever, but yeah, fuck me. Blow, Renegade getting a lot of publicity. I know they're really looking forward to it. I think that's what we'll see on the screen. Okay, great. Are our two contestants ready? Then come out boxing. So we have young Barry Wilson in the blue shorts playing from left to right, Barry McGuigan in the red shorts playing from right to left. And McGuigan starting off with some purchase to the body, some fearsome body blows from McGuigan there. Wilson, will he be able to take it? He's been tested now, but he's punching back look, at McGuigan. If we look below the players, we'll pick up the energy bars. Uh, they're both going down about equally at the moment, Dominic. It's fairly even. OK, but McGuigan's picking them off with some jabs in. Nice left, right. He needs to get that guard up around his head, protect his head. Oh, he's taking a lot of the chin. The yeah, Wilson's boy chin's been severely kicked. they going to go on that way. This is brutal. And McGuigan's not stopping. McGuigan's knocking fuck out him. Well then. Up up after two. His energy tops up just that little bit after a count. Okay, thank you, Tom. But, but he, needs to, he really needs to get his head, hands up around his head if he wants to protect himself against this. Right, but he's dishing out the punishment now. Oh, and that's McGuigan down for a standing count. What an evenly matched fight, Tom. Well, McGuigan's taking it. Well, he's taking account of his five. Oh, oh, he's he's going, going back towards the ropes. Wilson, oh, but Wilson's taking some close to the head. It really does come back to that guard. Terrible game. And it's the end of the round. End of the first round. Seconds out, round two. And Wilson started as he needs to go on. He's oh, like, the wicket. These the rounds are only a minute long, but I don't think the fighters are going to last the second. I think it'll be settled here. No. Oh, no, no. Wilson's no with the addition out of the game. Look, Wigan's in trouble. Oh, he's down. Oh, oh, and is he going to get up on this one, Tom? I think it looks, it looks all over the middle. What's Tiki Osho? Scintillating. Congratulations, Gary. We in the comedy box thought you were out of the fight. You were knocked down very This is our boxing champions. I only vaguely remember ball. boxing champions, yeah, so probably that. Out too, but, you know, basically, I've got to go down with the fight. So Certainly, the final blow is shite. The old fire buttons blazing and come out on top. Commiserations to the loser now. Barry, like we say, we thought it had gone the way of most of your fights. You had the measure of your man from the start, but then Oh, boxing champions, the one I did gem hunter, I remember it now. Um Yeah, boxing champions was actually maybe a wee bit better than that. That's how memorable it was, so I fucking forgot it. But yeah, boxing champions was still better than Final Blow. Final Blow was shite even back then. To Gary Wilson and our gallant loser Barry McGuigan. If you want to be as good a player as Gary, you can either practice hard into the wee small hours or look out for exclusive tips and cheats from everybody's favourite agony uncle, the Games Master. Hello, Games Master. Welcome to my kingdom. In Metal Gear, I keep getting lost in the maze zone. Is there an easy way out? Hmm, mazes. Um, I'm rather partial to a maze or two. 
You simply need to explore, young man, then memorize the correct route. If I remember correctly, now let me see, left, left, up, then left, will enable you to get through this particular maze zone and progress to the following buildings. Thank you very much. Well, please don't get lost. And I think we have someone now coming up. Hello, Games Master. Hello to you, young man. In Mega Man too, I'm having real trouble killing Dr. Wily in his alien form. Can you help me? <laughs> yes, I'm sure I can. Quite obviously, dear boy, you're not using the bubble lead. Only yeah, by duh. using the bubble lead can you dispose of Dr. Willy when he's in the alien form. <laughs> Dr. Willy. <laughs> All right, I'll try that. Thanks. All right, thank you. We have you. one more today, I think. I wonder who it is. Hello, Games Master. I always get killed by the blue lobster whenever I play the Revenge of Shinobi. How can I kill him? The suave motherfucker. Well, you need to show a little initiative, Dracula. Man. When you enter the chamber, jump onto the left-hand wall. Then, as he attacks and lowers his oh, you sword, did it, yeah. you need to jump, somersault, and shoot. If you repeat this procedure a number of times, you will overcome this villainous shellfish. Thank you very much. Well, you will find it really does have results. And I think that's enough little tidbits for one week. Heed my advice until we meet again. Now for our final challenge, let's see what Games Master has planned. Ninja warriors have been conspicuous by their absence from the programs to date, so I've decided to put that right with Shadow Dancer. Your task is to guide the warrior and his faithful to the second and third levels Could of be burning him. downtown Brooklyn in two and a half minutes without losing life. You will need to rescue all 11 hostages before destroying... It's kind of forgotten the these days Shadow Dancer, more well, because Revenge of Shinobi always gets re-released in Shadow Dancer never does. It's a shame. To add a cheeky little twist to this challenge, our competitor has never seen the game before. The reason for this is that we think he's quite good enough, but we have a games playing legend for you now. Sega European games playing champion, Danny Curley. He used to work in a video game shop in Glasgow. Now, tell us, how did you become Sega European champion? Well, Sega sponsored a big national tour and held heats in every city of the country. So I just entered and I won the heat, which sent me to the final. Now, you must practice a lot. How, how many hours a day do you spend playing games? Well, uh, recently it's been 10 hours a day because I've, I've got a job as a, a tier tech software company where they program computer games as a game tester. Oh, brilliant. That must be the perfect job for you then. Yeah, it is. <laughs> OK, if you'd like to sit yourself down in the game yeah, playing... It didn't last long there, mate, because you ended up working at fucking Future Shot in Glasgow. And joining me in the pulpit is Sega expert Neil West. Now, Neil, you've seen the Curly play a lot of times. How do you fancy his chances on Shadow? I don't know if he's in G-Force. He was in tough. Future Shock um, in The Forge, Shadow which Dancer then became Electronics Boutique, which then became if anyone can Game. Do it, the man. OK, Danny, are you ready? Yeah. Then begin the challenge. And off Danny goes. OK, um, now the first thing he's got to watch out for is these rocks falling from above. Um, not only are the ninjas, warriors, and other things out to get you, but there's also an earthquake going on. Oh dear, okay, can, that's, was that whole one hostage is That's one hostage gone. If you look at the bottom, down in the bottom right hand side of the screen, you'll see um, how many are there now, five little dots. That indicates that he's got to rescue five more hostages before the level's over. Out comes another warrior through the glass. Here we go, here's the earthquake. You can expect this sort of thing happening all the time. The floor will open up, walls will crash open, things will fall from above. He's really got to keep on his toes. Okay, oh, G4's so in the new industry, but yeah, this guy... Oh, there's some more rocks, but he's yeah, it didn't work there, though. He works at the forge instead. This game like a Dr. Water, Neil. <laughs> he really is a pro if ever there was one. Right, like a ninja to an emergency. Okay, now, oh my okay. word, so I've just leaped through that window there. Obviously, wasn't driving a Volvo. Okay, that's another hostage rescued. Only one more to go. Now, he hasn't used his dog. Um, if he holds down the fire button, um, Oh, but he's completed the first level. Well done, Danny. He's against the end of level guardian here now. This is where it starts getting very tough. Certainly. He's played this. Oh, my word. Look at all those rocks come pouring down here. Now, Curly at his disposal also has some magic. Um, I don't know whether he's going to choose to use it or not, but it should get some hits on this guy. He seems to be doing OK. Oh, here we go. He's using the magic. Here we go. He can only use this once per stage, so he's obviously saved it till the end. When he oh, and he's done it. And he's done it. The bad guy's bought it. <laughs> Woo! 
No, I've not. I don't like him. No, Danny, that was absolutely staggering. I know you're European champion, but even still, you just breezed through that. Were you worried at all? Yeah, a bit at first. What was, what was some of the most difficult We're in the Sega Power Baseball Cup. Shameless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they did sneak up on you pretty craftily yeah. there. Well, Carly, you're a legend already, but you have won the prize that even legends dream of the Golden Games Master Joystick! Poor. Yeah. Yeah. that. And that round of applause for the European Sega Champion, Danny Curry! I don't know if he still is. This was mid 90s or so. So that's I hope he's not. <laughs> it's lemon verbena for me, and join us in seven days for another game master. Realises it's a different type of tea he drinks after every episode. Well, one more to go, folks, and then series one is done. It's been quite the trip, quite the ride. Hopefully, you've been enjoying it. A new fucking hero in this episode in the form of Nigel. Now for those details about the Games Master Club. We have free t-shirts, new competitions and posters with information about the show. The number <laughs> to call and please dial carefully is 0891 600 123. Calls are charged at 36 pence a minute off peak and 48 pence at all other times. If you're under 18, please ask permission before making the call. You said it, mate. Right, let's do another tweet and then we'll do the last episode of the evening and, and indeed of the series. Right, there were seven series of Games Master. Uh, so I'm sure it's some. I'm sure we'll eventually get through them all. Don't worry. Say so don't worry. I, if you'd like me to go through them all, I'm happy to do so. Anyway, let's go. Episode ten, the final episode, of series one. Let's do it. And welcome to a very sad occasion. Like Labracci, I've tinkered with my last ivory for tonight sees the final games master in the series. <laughs> Over the last 10 weeks, we've introduced television to the joys of video gaming, and we hope we've shown some people the neon delights of arcade ecstasy while satisfying the cravings of the most rampant joystick tuggers. <laughs> so it is with a huge lump in my throat. I now sadly turn to the, for the last time to the microchip man who's won a place in all your hearts, the Games Master. Joystick tuggers. Size, no, no, no. Shoot it. That's the message for the first of this week's challenges on Duck Hunt. Yes! Hunting dog the off. fucking bold duck hunt. You have three shots to bag each pair of fleeing ducks. You will need to shoot eight out of ten ducks on the first level. If you're successful, you'll go on to the second level where smaller and faster clay pigeons will replace ducks. And you'll need to hit nine oh, that's good to know. for ultimate trap. Go on, see if you can make my day, young man. Young and man. trying to blast some innocent wildfowl tonight is a young trigger-happy lad from Wirral, Paul Gammon. 
See, we're gonna have to cross that bridge when we come here because series three is the one with Dexter Fletcher instead of Donald Diamond. The, obviously, the drinking game will stop at that point. But I'd still get the feeling we should do it just to experience the lows. Because I'm sure plenty of abuse will fly at that and it could be quite funny. Plus, that series had the best celebrities, in my opinion. Well, if you'd like to take your pistol in your hand, get in position and we'll get ready to start. Here again is Jazz Rigno from Meme Machine and CNVG. Jazz, Doc Hunt, what a game. Well, it's nearly as old as the Challenger, but it's fun and that's what counts. <laughs> yeah, we'll find a way to turn Series 3 into a drinking game. Maybe every time Dexter well, Fletcher says something fucking right stupid. Next to the screen so you can't miss. Uh, <laughs> that's about it, I think. Okay. Well, I'm sure our Challenger will bear that in mind. Are you ready, Paul? Then off you go. Just put it up to the screen, you wee dick. Nice solid start though, 2 out of 2. And he's got the first one. Oh, another 2 out of 2. This boy is smoking now, Jazz. <laughs> you better watch out that confidence goes to his head. And... That's certainly not a problem, watching Games Master, that's a... 6 out of 6, this boy is that's on gold. fire here. 7. 8. And it's dead eye shooting. <laughs> Safely through to the final round there. He's just going to knock off these other couple of ducks. Just... Just to show his prowess, and oh. we just miss it. Nine out of ten, though. Excellent scoring. Now we go on to the final round. Okay, so off Paul goes. He's looking for nine out of ten here, Jazz, on the clay pigeons. One gone. Oh, oh, oh you there. fucked it, That's mate. Because although they go in a straight line, they don't hang about as long as the duck. So it's got to be fairly quick. Oh, oh. Yeah, that was very close. He's being a bit uh, itchy on the trigger finger. <laughs> He's, got, he's not following them through. Oh, this is it. He's got. Please get one of those video game watches as well, the LCD watches. He's got nice. Oh. Yes! You fucked it, mate! Yeah, they should have. Oh. Paul, you were so close. Jazz at this stuff. Did they not release this in Virtual Console, though? I'm almost there. certain they did. Talk me through what happened in the end. Just got trigger-happy. Yeah, Just got to take it up, you like. But have you enjoyed yourself anyway? Yeah. Well, you, we've all certainly enjoyed it here, so that's something to take back to the world. Thank you very much, Paul. Thanks. Definitely sure. Night Trap, eh, Night Trap, so, <laughs> Duck Hunt ended up on it is with a heavy Wii Virtual that we Console. The next stage of the program. But if after the tenseness of that, you perhaps think that life has lost a little bit of its edge, wait till you see... Um, didn't, I don't know where I got that from. I'm sure there was a Zapper game on it. This week, whoops, Vicar, oh, well. it's time to send Granny out of the room as we look at... Oh, we you it was. First up on the Amiga, Mrs. Whitehouse's favourite, the Luke Strip Poker 2. I can't see the pleasure in seeing these rather unattractive <laughs> people when you buy a magazine. Of Jonathan Ross's wife. No clothes on, but it's a good fun card game. It's good fun to get out. Of Writer course. of Kickass. Data discs available with male characters on for all those unfortunate girlfriends and wives, so that they don't feel too left out. When the novelty's worn off about stripping, it's actually a very good game. No, as in mate, fuck off. <laughs> Next up, also on the Amiga, inscrutable oriental puzzles with an attempt at titillation in Geisha. Teasingly titled, but um, actually a little bit tame at the end of the day. You're going to be fidgeting whether you've bought it as an adventure game or as a piece of adult entertainment. It just doesn't really deliver. It's a fun game, a bit long and drawn out really, to be commercially viable. <laughs> And lastly, fueling the <laughs> fantasies of balding, pot-bellied PC owners everywhere, Leisure Suit Larry 5. These it's games really are terrible. It delivers in, in an adult way on a humour front, and it's fairly fruity as well. The graphics are excellent. This is a really fun and a challenging game. <laughs> Now for this week's feature, which sees the second part of our look at the new Whopper consoles. This week we cast our eyes over the one everybody's talking about, the Super Nintendo. Once again, Paul Lakin, the editor of GameZone magazine, is here to whet our appetite. I think it was out at this point. There consoles that have been more eagerly awaited than the Super NES, which is being released in the spring. People have probably already seen it as a Super Famicom, which has been available on import. It's a really exciting machine with a colour page of about th over 32,000 colours and um, four layer screens which make for some impressive 3D graphics, 3D appearing graphics. It's possibly the best machine around at the moment. 
the quality of the games for it's outstanding. I'd say it really lives up to its hype. If you'd like more information about anything in the programme, you can call the Games Master Club. We'll give you the number at the end of the show. Now, about this time, every week, I don't have fancy a celebrity challenge. Well, this week is no different. To hear all about it, let's call up Games Master. Nice to see you again. I am flattered that you've come back to try your hand at another of my little challenges. I thought a spot of football would be rather apt for my second little jaunt, and I've chosen a game by the name of Emlyn Hughes International Soccer. A resilient classic. and hard-tackling England side will pit their skills against the flair of Brazil over two 90-second halves. May the best team win. And in this fast and yeah, Ghosts and Goblins is still encounter. rock hard. Young Sonny Neya from Ealing will be taking on the man who named the game, former Liverpool and England captain, Emlyn Hughes. That doesn't mean he played it though. Yeah, Games Master's in it from start to finish. Commitment. Now, Emlyn, welcome. To be fair, there's money for old rope. He just sat in a fucking chair like for two well, hours I, I and read stuff. I'm in the bookie's eyes, but I hope that the referee abandons it with all this fog about <laughs> because that's my only chance, I think. <laughs> now, Get your arm you think away from me. Against Crazy Horse himself? Well, I think I play a lot of computer games at home, so I think I could do it. Okay, well, I'm gonna. my money's on you for this game, Sonny, Watch I think. It. If you'd like to take your seats in the Games Master right, Stadium, we'll get ready for kickoff. Maybe I'll have his arm around him these days. And keeping me warm and snug in the Games Master dugout is our very own expert, Dave Perry. Dave, welcome. Hi. Now, Dave, what general tips can you give to our players for this particular game? Well, with most football simulations, the most important thing is mastering the tackling early on. And um, not being afraid to take the goalie on, I think, is important in this game. OK, are our two competitors ready? OK. Then, Emlyn, kick off. OK. And the players come out to the pitch. It's Emlyn in the white shirts playing England, playing from left to right. Sonny in the famous green and gold shirts of Brazil, playing right to left. Dave, how do you see this match going? Well, the Brazilian side are usually a little bit faster than England early on, but England have the stamina and usually better tacklers. So um, I, I must admit, I, I do fancy Sonny for this game. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so got the ball. You're He's not the only one, Bill, looks at Sonny is, Sonny is. He's bucking and weaving. He's making mincemeat out of the English midfield there. Coming down the edge of the ball. He's dribbling around. He's going to go all the way, I think. Oh, he's dispossessed by English defence. That must have been Emlyn there, I think, at the I back. Yeah, in the English at the back. And it looks like it's Brian Robson who's up there. Right? And Brazil have got it again. Oh, and a nasty foul hey. there by Emlyn Hughes. <laughs> Emlyn's playing a little bit hard here, I think. <laughs> Snuffing out the brilliant skill early on. <laughs> oh, it's a lovely ball up in the box. Isn't it? Brazil have got it. And they take it up there. We're going to see a shot. He's taking the goals. Oh, oh. the place here. Oh, he's still got the ball. He's in the England box. He's coming up. He's giving up. Oh, no. So, you cheat. The crucial factor of this game so far. Watch it, been, mate. Sonny's Watch willingness it. to cheat him. Emlyn's inability to stop him in defence. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ellen's got his work connected. All the time I'm doing, I keep losing it. And Brazil have got it again. He's shite at this. Oh, here they come again towards the England box here. And it'd be we nice if England could tackle as well <laughs> at some point. We could see a third goal, but he's down. He said that Brazil have got it again. Oh! Oh! <laughs> and all the hands up on Lopez. Lopez. Yeah, yes, he does. He's only seen one team in this, doesn't he? <laughs> So how can Emlyn get back in this game? How can he try some long passes? What does he have to do in the joystick? I would say, yeah, for the oh, long shot, he wants, to, he wants to get, get a bit of pace on his player, pull back on a joystick with a fire button in, and let go, and really hammer some at that Brazilian goal. Get some rebounds in there. OK, but here's Brazil the England boss again. It could be a fourth. Oh! oh and no, Brazil defense. have got it again. It's still dangerous. It's not over yet. But England get it out of the box, but Brazil take it again. Oh! So close there, but it's over yet. Brazil gets there. it. <laughs> Emlyn's a weird name, isn't it? Is there anyone else in the world called Emlyn? What is this fucking mess of a game? And England get the ball away here. It's congested in that goal, man. And it's half time. Oh, they've all gone. And the half time score is England nil, Brazil three. Should really be full time, in fairness. 
So what a breathtaking game we have here. Young Sonny from Ealing has already stuck three goals past Emlyn Hughes and it's only half time. Will Emlyn claw his way back? Join us after the break. Master Stadium. Young Sonny Nea from Ealing has stuck three goals against Emlyn Hughes, to which Emlyn hasn't replied. Will this be a one-way traffic of a second match? Let's kick off the second half to see. So the team's come out for the second half. The English players <laughs> looking a bit spirited now, Dave. Perhaps they've got the bit between their teeth. But I, I should think yeah, it's probably why Emlyn Hughes was off. never fucking um, contributed to another game, game again. Which would surely put the game beyond that, but no! Oh my god, he's going the wrong way! Oh. It could be, oh my <laughs> word! Footballing suicide there from the England centre back. I, I think England were told to score in the second half, and nobody told them they changed ends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they picked it up. Oh no, oh. Brazil take it back! Oh, what a lovely slide and tackle, but it's not. Yeah, Emlyn's secretly oh, raging. Is it it's a penalty? A penalty. Yes. Oh, and it's a penalty to Brazil. Could make it. And they take it. Oh, what a save! <laughs> they we don't know where it is. <laughs> No, I didn't even cross the line. My word. That was absolutely unbelievable. The ball was in the net, then it wasn't in the net again. Well, that's football for you, Dave. It's a funny old okay. game. It certainly is. And unfortunately, it's not a game of two halves because this half's going the same way as the first. It's the same as the all 4-0 up. It looks like it's current for England here. Yeah, the longest minute in, in television goal. history. I'm not even convinced there's a goal at the other end of the screen, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and Brazil have got the ball. Oh, they're going oh, ganged oh. up on him then. They were determined for that one. I don't think we've seen one pass in the game from England. Well, is it a pass from either team? I don't think it's been a purely dribbly game. Oh, Brazil have got the ball. It could be another oh, one. What a oh, save by the goalie. No, oh, no, it's no, not. No, yes, no, it could be. No. <laughs> Soccer. Oh, 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 again. <laughs> Five nil, and this is. Probably the worst England defeat since 1973, by my reckoning, Dave. I think so, yeah. Now, could we just get one last go? Oh, and there's a little bit of a man running in the middle of the field there from the England side. A little frack in the middle. He's going to go the ball. He's going to work again. Oh, no, no oh. and it would be so nice to see him get that a goal. familiar side again. But they're not going to get it as second as I take it away. Are England going to get it? Oh, no. again. Oh, oh. Great save again. And there's only seconds Come left in this on, match. This is the final charge of the game from England, and it's going to end in nothing. The ref's looking at his That's it, done. And he's there in his we armor. There it is, the final was a goal. Well, there we go. England nil. Emlyn has been trounced by Sonny. You were looking, he was a chance. There you're lucky, little bugger. Right, hands to yourself, Emlyn. Hands to yourself, man. Commiserations, Emlyn. Some ah. nice charging runs up the middle, but you couldn't get the ball in the back I of the net. Couldn't get the ball in the net. They were too good for me, Brazil, and especially this little lad. He had a brilliant match. You did, Sonny. At 5 0. Bit of a trouncing against Emlyn. How do you think you won? Just attacking him. <laughs> and attacking him yourself. <laughs> He'll be fucking attacking him later if he doesn't keep his hands to himself. By being Emlyn, you have won the most famous prize in television our special Golden Games Master joystick. <laughs> Take it and run, son. Okay, so let's have another round of applause for our winner, yes. Sonny Nea. Now, Gallant Lewis and Emlyn Hughes. Good job, fucking arms wasn't out at this point. Now, while I take a little breather after that hectic encounter, let's find out the latest tips and cheats in Games Master's consultation zone. Master. Welcome to my kingdom. Very sadly, we are coming to the end of the series, and you're one of the very last three who can take advantage of my advice. So, how can I help you? I can't get through the Lost Woods in Zelda. Can you help me? Zelda again, you Zelda, fucking prick. There's only one way through the Lost Woods, young man. Up. Left. Amazing that it's the first Zelda and even then there's like annoying Down. wood sections. Then left again. You can then proceed to the next part of the game. Thank you very much. You'll find it quite easy. 
Right, next up, please. Hello, Games Master. Hello, and what can I do for you? On Shadow Dancer, I keep getting killed trying to get to the top of the Statue of Liberty. Can you help me? Oh, dear, young man. You know, I hate to say this, but you really do seem to be rather lacking in ability. All you need to do is to You're keep the right-hand side of the platform as it rises. But then, you can dispose of the ninjas as they appear to the left. By doing that, you'll reach the top of the Statue of Liberty in no time. It really is quite that simple, you know. Thanks, mate. Oh, cheers. Well, I wish you all success. And now we come to our very last visit to my kingdom. Hello, Games Master. I've been playing Rad Gravity for absolutely ages. <laughs> Rad Gravity. Could you tell me where they are, please? Oh, dear, In the NES. Let me think. The crystal bombs in Rad Gravity. Bear with you one second. Oh, yes. If I recall correctly, the crystal bombs are in Fucking bombs. amazing acting yes, from the guy who isn't an actor. After you drop down the shaft, you will need to use the energy disc to fly under the hole in the roof. If you then jump up and go to your right, you will find the secret room which contains the bombs. Does that make sense to you? Yes, thanks a lot. Yeah, the music wasn't I'm great. I'm glad it does, but I fear that brings our little get-together to a close. I do hope that some of the advice I've imparted will serve to enhance your game playing performances. Now for our final challenge, let's see what Games Master's got planned. I fear this may be the last of our little get-togethers. A melancholy moment indeed. No matter. I obviously didn't know I was going to get renewed at this point. Rather macabre little number with which to finish off the series. It's called Decap Attack. Ah, oh, what a game. A headless personage by the name of Chuck D. There was a Master System game called Psycho Fox, and this was a odd kind of reskinning of it for the Mega Drive. Whatever you do, don't lose your head. Now, we may be featuring the first two levels of this game, but two minutes is a very tricky time limit indeed. Attempting to sprint his way through this game challenge is John Beveridge from Hastings. Mm. Now, John, this is a very tough game. How long have you been practicing? I've had the game about a week, so I've had quite a bit of practice. Right, that's right. I hear you're a bit of an expert, but it's a very tough time challenge. Two minutes. Are you confident? Yeah, I am. Okay, that's good to see you. Right, you Maybe like prick. To sit down, get your joystick Do in your hand, then. and we'll get ready to play. And helping to keep me moist and fluffy in the pulpit tonight is Neil West from Sega Power. Welcome back, Neil. Hi, Dominic. Now, any tips you can give John for the game? Well, you didn't underestimate it when you said that two minutes was very, very tough. There's lots of things to pick up, but the one thing he's got to make sure he gets is the head. He can then pick that up and chuck it at his enemies. When you say the original Wonder Boy, do you mean okay, the very first John, Master System ready? one, which was a bit like Adventure Island? Then your two minutes begin now. <laughs> Off he goes. Yeah, he did the right thing. He went straight to the statue. In which case, yeah. He got himself his extra head. And now he can throw that at his enemies, and that's why it's called Chuck D. Head. That's why. Sega joke number one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, he's zooming through these levels incredibly fast. He's it's jumping over is. a lot of them. Is that quicker? Yeah, that's the best idea. Um, he can get all sorts of good things by killing bad Yeah, I've not what played enough of the new one yet, but by from what I've seen of it so far, yeah, it so looks incredible. And the Master System, the, the original was kind of well, well, well ahead of its time anyway, so it kind of it stands up. Even though it's just like a graphical remake. Indeed, as you said, he's not taking time out to beat the baddies. He's jumping over them. That's a lot quicker. He's got the right idea there. Yeah, the one, the one that's been re-released is like Wonder Boy three. Uh, the the remake that just came out on the Switch and that that Dragon's Trap is the third Wonder Boy game, I believe. Just over a minute, Neil. Can he do it? Yes, he can. He hasn't taken a hit. He's still got his head, and everything's going great. As long as he keeps this up, he should just do it. Okay, now these arrow things are giving him a further jumping power. They are, but he's got yeah, at least to their own. I, I, I think it looks lovely, as they say. Now, level two is a lot trickier than level one. And the only thing he's got to worry about, really, is losing his head. If he loses that, he'll be in big trouble, but he's doing okay, okay so Okay, 45 seconds left here. It's going to be very, very close, but I think he's going to do it, Neil. He moment. took a bit of time there. He missed the jump, so he had to go back and do it again. That must have wasted him a good five seconds. Right, well, he's got just over 30 seconds left here. I see he jumped on a skull there to get up. And, oh, no, he's been hit once and he's lost his head. He's lost his head. That's going to be a big problem. He now can't afford to take any hits whatsoever. And it's also going to find it a lot tougher killing the baddies. And he's pointed through those blocks. These arrows are shooting him up there. 20 seconds left here. 
He's that, shooting up those balls again. That bouncing through the blocks is very clever. That was a very neat shortcut. He's going to make it. Oh, he's done it. Cheeky bastard. With 12 seconds left, John has completed the challenge. We have a winner. Well done, John. Now, John, you heard through those levels here, but you came a little bit unstuck in the second one. You took a hit, you lost your head. Were you worried? Yeah, they remade Dragon Strap. It's on Switch yes. and all that kind of stuff. Right, and you did it with 12 seconds. To Excellent. Spare. It was incredibly good. And as a result of this, being one of our games playing champions, you win the prize that cannot be priced: our Golden Games Master joystick. Well done, you smarmy prick. Tragically, that brings Games Master to a final close. So for the last time, I slip on my smoking jacket and take a melancholy mug of rosehip. And I can only wish that one day we'll resume our blossoming relationship. Good night. And it could have been the end had it not been renewed for a second series. There we go. For all we know, in an alternative universe, that could have been the last ever episode of Games Master. But no, it continued. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thank you all very much for watching the first series of Games Master with me. Now for those details about the Games Master Club. We have free t-shirts, new competitions and posters with information about the show. The number to call and please dial carefully is 0891 600 123. Calls are charged at 36 pence a minute off peak and 48 pence at all other times. If you're under yeah, Chevron and Nigel were definitely tonight's uh, interesting characters. Um, but yeah, there we go. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching that, uh, accompanying me as I enjoyed the good old days of Games Master. Um, we'll give it a few days break and then we'll decide what to do next. We can either go straight on to Series 2 or we can mix things up with like the first series of Bad Influence or something like that, which was the um, children's uh, BBC, maybe children's ITV, can't remember, um, video game show, which is another kind of interesting look. Uh, look back, but um, either way, we'll definitely do one of the other. Uh, take that was in series two, a games master. Um, so yeah, we will decide in a bit. Bad influences. I will tell you right now how many episodes bad influences. I don't want to switch between them, like go one episode of one, one episode of the other. I'd rather do it in series chunks. Um, we'll do bad influence eventually. We'll either just do it. Um, yeah, there's thirteen bad influences in series one. Let's. Keep going through Games Master for now, eh? Um, do them in chronological order? Alright, oh, okay. Well, when did Bad Influence... Sorry, you can hang around if you want. The, the stream's done now, but um, let's have a look. When Bad Influence came out. Because that's an idea. There's, it'd be weird jumping back to retro games again after we get to the end of Games Master. So, Bad Influence started at the end of 92, so technically Bad Influence started after... This series one of Games Master started, so logically and chronologically, Bad Influence would be next. Um, so I don't know. We'll do a we'll do a poll or something later on on Twitter, and we'll try and figure it out. Um, six and a half a dozen. We'll get everything watched eventually at some point. So we'll either do series one of Bad Influence next, or stick with Games Master. Yeah, I'll put it to Twitter vote because it's we're not going to get in decided tonight. Anyway, but yeah, thank you very much. Like I say, it'll all get watched eventually. If we if we go to get, uh, to Bad Influence, we'll do three or four a night. It'll only take three nights, three or four nights, and then we'll move on to Games Master again. If we do Games Master, we'll plow on through that. So six and a half dozen. And when they're both done, I've got plenty of other stuff we can watch. So don't worry, this will be a long running thing. If you want, I've got loads of really old nineties documentaries and old videotapes and stuff like that. That some of which is really rare that nobody's seen before. So. Or like three people have seen, so um, very happy to kind of go through the old VHS archives if you want. Um, but yeah, thanks guys, thanks for watching that. I've very much enjoyed it, um, and plenty more to come. So please do subscribe and all that shit. 
Um, but yeah, I will catch you on the flip flop. Hi, guys. Good night. Ooh.